With the shoddy launch of Diablo 3 and the triumphant return of Diablo 2 Resurrected, I have been hyped to jump back in and hunt down Lilith to bring balance to Sanctuary. In 97, I was armed with an all-in-one PC from IBM, and I hated that thing. I fondly remember breaking up with my girlfriend at the time as I was duping Obsidian Rings of the Zodiac for my warrior. Now with Diablo 4, I'm armed with a different style of all-in-one, Valve's PC handheld, the Steam Deck. I've beat the campaign, some world bosses, and jumped into some larger scale Legion battles, and I've gotta say, I've got the best settings to play Diablo 4. Hey guys, Trick here, I hope you're having a good one. If you were looking for the quick and dirty, let's get straight to it. Diablo 4 comes with some pretty well-tuned presets out of the box, so let's take a look. If you're hoping for a close to 60 FPS experience, the low preset will get you close. And that 1% low of 49 is a great start. Moving to the medium preset is a significant upgrade to the visual quality. Still, at native resolution, we fall just short of 60 FPS. As for 1% lows, that does start to tumble a bit, hovering shy of 40. The Steam Deck can hit console-like quality settings, but wow, that high preset drops us down another 10 FPS down to 40. And from my testing, the Ultra preset does seem like a bit of a meme, so I'll be skipping that going forward. As I've said numerous times here on the channel, the Steam Deck needs all the help it can get, so let's see if AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution can help us out. For those unfamiliar with the tech, here's the TLDR. FSR essentially uses a lower internal resolution and upscales it to our Steam Deck's 800p screen. This lowers the GPU burden, hopefully getting us some higher frame rates. Now that's more like it. In quality mode, we get a 35% improvement in frame rate at high quality settings, 30% with medium, and 36% at low. For both medium and low, we are instantly above 60 FPS, though our 1% lows are lower than I'd like. As for balanced, we see an additional 11% improvement on top of that, though we sacrifice a bit of clarity in the form of blur. As we go into the performance and ultra performance FSR modes, we do see impressive results. Still, at that point, the screen looks incredibly blurry and it's hard to see that on the deck 7 inch screen. And with less than 60 FPS, 1% lows, that's just not a good trade off. So if you want to set it and forget it, here's the TLDR. Run medium settings in FSR at quality mode. Balanced is also a good experience in the heat of action if you need a few more frames. But there's still a lot to cover, and the most controversial is frame rate. If you've ever played a previous Diablo game, you'll know that the action in the game is very fast paced. There are many instances where a fraction of a second can spell life or death. As such, 60 FPS is the go-to frame rate in those instances. However, the Steam Deck really does struggle to maintain 40 when in those intense scenarios. So for science, I played the entire game in 40 FPS mode. During standard fight sequences, I could easily maintain control of my Barbarian. And as I entered the gates of hell, the number of characters on the screen in the ensuing chaos was manageable at 40 FPS. Though not ideal, these are optimized settings, and one factor to keep in mind is battery life. While gaming at 40 FPS, the entire Steam Deck would drain, on average, 16 watts from the battery. In some instances, it would spike up to 20, but most of the time, it would drain in the 13 to 14 watt range. Overall, that gets you about two and a half hours of playtime. In 60 FPS mode, I would regularly draw about 27 watts, which is far from ideal for longer sessions. So guys, get your chargers ready. That'll keep your Steam Deck running for only an hour and a half. Ultimately, it'll all boil down to how you like to slay demons, either at a locked 40 FPS for longer gaming sessions or an inconsistent 60 FPS while sitting by a charger. That settles it, right? Well, not really. Even with acceptable performance, we gotta see what visual compromises we're giving up. Let's start with texture quality. At low, the rocks in the path look like mud, and the wood looks like plain brown rectangles. Snow also looks like a simple white blanket covering some rocks. With medium, things clear up a bit. 
the path has a bit more definition to it, and the wood begins to show some of its splits in the roof. However, the snow on the edges of the shot still look rather flat. High is where things become much more vivid. The edges of the stone cobbles are precise, and the muddy paths show spots that are moist and others that are just soaked. The snow also shows a bit of texture here, though it's much more subtle than I would have hoped. The medium and high texture settings look the best when out and about, and performance doesn't suffer much either. Here, I recommend the high setting. Anisotropic filtering doesn't impact our performances within the game, so feel free to play around with this setting. But for my recommended setting, I just stuck with 8x. Diablo uses its environments to tell a story, and as such, shadow quality can heavily impact the game's overall experience. On the high setting, shadows are much deeper and more accurate across the scene. Going down to medium, the shadows appear lighter around the poles in the ground and along the terrain, but it's overall subtle in the main focus area. At low, shadow details are nearly gone across the scene, and it starts to bleed into the character's shadows and some of the nearby details, especially in that lamp. The medium setting is a good compromise given the performance delta of about 4 frames or 7%. Dynamic Shadows is a simple selection, but it drastically impacts both performance and visuals. When turned on, shadows react to the light sources in the game, making it feel a much more immersive experience. Shadows flicker with the firelight, especially behind that tree. When turned off, shadows really aren't around. The characters, NPCs, and the terrain don't really react to light sources around the scene. Performance, though, that might win you over. Netting 13% performance might be enough for some people, but I prefer the visual experience over the performance. I chose to keep it on, but know that this setting is a heavy hitter and disabling it can help you out in the long run. Soft shadows and shader quality, on the other hand, don't impact our performance. I decided to leave that setting to on and high respectively. Screen space ambient occlusion or SSAO impacts the lighting of two adjoining surfaces like walls, joints, and other structural points in the scene. With SSAO set to off, this mossy wall looks like a simple texture with minimal definition. As we progressively turn up the setting, the definition continues to increase, but that comes at the cost of frame rate. From off to low, we lose about 5 frames, but no additional frames are lost bumping to medium. High gets us a decrease of a full 10 FPS, though the wall is much more defined and pleasing to look at. Trying to strike a balance between performance and visuals, I prefer the look and the feel of medium here. Fog quality is another heavy hitter that would hopefully appear to impact our moody atmosphere. Wandering around the first two acts of the game, I initially set this to medium since those areas didn't have much fog. But going into Act 3 and riding around in the swamps of the world, ouch, low is by far the better option here. Clutter quality impacts the amount of stuff that's on the ground worldwide and it scales very well with performance. As expected, off removes distracting foliage and grass from the scene while high cranks it up for more immersion. Even in scenes that require plants, like the farm in Act 2, they just provide a minimal amount of crops, while progressively increasing the density decreases the frame rate accordingly. Again, medium is that sweet spot of minimal performance impact while maintaining a decent visual experience. One thing I love about Diablo 4 is the variety of equipment, and the fur quality helps us embellish the hides that we wear on our bodies. Unfortunately, on the 7 inch Steam Deck screen, it's really tough to tell the difference between all the settings, so I'm just keeping it at medium. Geometry complexity doesn't impact visual quality all that much, but turning it down to the low setting does give us 2 FPS improvement in some instances. However, I'm going to keep that value at medium here since that 2 FPS isn't impacting us as much in the long run. The same can be said about terrain geometry. Stepping out of Kovashad, the rock appears to be very similar between the two different settings, and there's no performance impact there either. In favor of visual quality, I'll be keeping that to high. Several other settings don't negatively impact our performance, at least in my testing, so I kept water simulation, anti-aliasing, physics, and particles set to high. The last two settings to talk about deal with reflections. 
These settings to me are really redundant since the game is based in a medieval world and there's just not that many reflective services. And given the performance impact from those two settings alone, I'll be turning them to low and off respectively. Diablo 4 has a lot of settings at our disposal and there's only a few that you really got to keep your eye on. Dynamic shadows, SSAO, fog, clutter, and reflection quality are the most significant contributors to performance. And on the Steam Deck, turning those down or even off might look okay on the small handheld screen. Playing Diablo 4 on the Steam Deck with my optimized settings never looked so good. By walking through the settings and dialing back effects that impact performance too much, we can get a visual experience on par with the high preset, yet it performs just as well as the medium preset. Depending on your blur tolerance, these settings look great with either the quality or balanced FSR settings. And with 1% lows well above 40 FPS, the Steam Deck can comfortably handle Diablo 4 for over two hours of playtime. Obviously, dungeons will perform a bit better than the open world, and the Steam Deck can struggle when lots of characters are on the screen. But it's still a great experience through the main campaign. The campaign was a blast, the Legion battles are so exciting, and the world bosses are an epic battle. And all of this is thanks in part to these settings and the mighty Steam Deck. And that's all I have to say about Diablo 4 on the Steam Deck. I appreciate y'all sticking to the end of the video, and I hope to catch you in Sanctuary in the next one.